Welcome to Utah Tech. You are about to see a television production illustrating our college's capital facilities needs for fiscal years 1985-86 and 1986-87. On March 19, 1947, Senate Bill 76 took effect and what would eventually become Utah Technical College at Salt Lake opened. From the beginning, the college saw its role in the educational community as a training center where Utah's people could learn skills needed by Utah's business and industry. After registration the next fall, the college counted 175 students in 14 courses of study. Before that instructional year had ended, the college had served 1,387 students. Today, Utah Tech serves in excess of 9,000 students in 41 courses of study. According to estimates by the Board of Regents, by the year 1992, our college will be serving 7,701 FTEs, or almost 15,000 students. Historically, the successes and failures of Utah's economy have depended on the availability of sufficient quantities of the right kinds of skilled workers. We believe Utah Technical College at Salt Lake will continue its pivotal role in building strength in Utah's economy by providing the critical technical training to Utah's people. We ask the regions to recommend sufficient financial support of our college so we can better meet the educational needs of Utah's people. Top priority, remodel for handicapped, $102,000. In October of 1983, the college received a formal complaint from a handicapped student in a wheelchair who was unable to take certain classes because the college does not comply with the federal handicap law. Last quarter, an older woman in a wheelchair was heard crying in a bathroom stall in our administration building. Her wheelchair was tightly wedged between the partitions and she was trapped for 20 minutes before someone helped free her. In addition to our students' health, safety, and comfort, we are concerned that our federal funds are in jeopardy and ask the regions to recommend funds for the remodeling of our administration, metal trades, automotive trades, technology, and construction trades buildings to bring them in compliance with federal law. Priority 1, Roadways and Right-of-Way, $729,000. Four years ago, a comprehensive transportation study of our campus was completed by Wayne Van Wagner and Associates. They counted 11,160 vehicle trips per day. According to a more recent count, the figure has now climbed to more than 14,600 vehicles entering or leaving our campus each day. 4500 South currently cuts through the center of our campus. It is a high-speed road, and many of our students and employees have been injured by motorists who are driving in fast-moving and unusually congested traffic while searching for parking spaces. We are asking the regions to recommend funding for the construction of our North Perimeter Road to give immediate access to parking facilities now planned or under construction. This will take most of the most dangerous traffic away from the center of the campus. Priority 2, parking lots, $1,120,000. No issue on our campus is more explosive than our parking situation. The college provides only 1,600 parking spaces for nearly 14,000 students and college employees. The scarcity of parking spaces prompts many motorists to park illegally in the Taylorsville Cemetery, on the streets of adjoining subdivisions, and anywhere they can find a space large enough. The legislature has not helped us with our parking problems for more than 10 years, and although we have tried, we are unable to provide sufficient parking lot repairs from either the sale of parking stickers or revenue from parking tickets. In conjunction with the DFCM, we are building a 200-space parking area to replace the 142 parking spaces lost when construction of our new business building began. We asked the regions to recommend construction of 1,015 parking spaces. Priority 3, parking lot repairs, $159,000. Three of our parking lots, encompassing 154,000 square feet, are deteriorating much faster than we are able to repair them. These parking areas can be saved from total replacement by a two-inch asphalt overlay. The cost of the overlay is only 30% of the cost of total surface replacement. We are asking the regions to recommend the repair of these three parking lots. Priority 4, Business Building, Phase 2, $5,638,000. The Utah System of Higher Education projects a 45% increase in college and university enrollments by the year 1992. Our college will grow faster than the system average. Last year's legislature authorized us to accept 500 more student FTEs next year, a 10.5% increase. We cannot grow larger without additional funding. 
Our college is already overfilling classrooms and teaching students in places that are too crowded and neither environmentally nor ergonomically conducive to good educational programs. In addition, high technology is significantly impacting School of Business programs. Businesses and industry are demanding all business majors to acquire computer-related skills, skills learned by hands-on experience in laboratories. Our existing labs are busy from early morning until midnight and on weekends. We are currently unable to provide enough lab time for such students, and the increasing demands are forcing us to spread lab time even more thinly. We ask the regions to help us relieve the compacted conditions for faculty and students in the School of Business by recommending the funding of the second phase of our business building. The second phase will add 49,000 square feet to the structure. Utility tunnels, sidewalks, landscaping and parking lots have already been installed in readiness for the second phase. Priority 5. Structural Concrete Repair, Automotive Trades Building, $42,000. Structural concrete deteriorates rapidly unless it's made impermeable to water. When water gets into the concrete and freezes, chunks of material break loose. Moisture also causes the steel reinforcements to rust, which causes further deterioration and a general weakening of the structure. Last year, we received funding to correct deteriorating concrete on our administration and construction trades buildings. The automotive trades building is next in line for such repairs. We ask that the Regents help us prevent this building's further deterioration by recommending funding to repair damaged steel reinforcements and waterproofing of the concrete surfaces. Priority 6, Landscape Beautification, Redwood Road Campus, $207,000. When our Redwood Road campus was a beet field, it was flat and featureless, the way a good beet field should be. But good beet fields do not make good college campuses. The physical appearances of our campus is the first and often the only impression passers-by receive. Ideally, the landscaping should foster a feeling of college campus. Mr. Obert C. Tanner has given the college a fountain that is in the process of construction in the center of our quad. We are grateful for this beautiful addition to our campus. We ask the Regents to recommend funds we need to make needed aesthetic improvements on our campus, including the addition of flowers and shrubs, places for outside study and relaxation, berms to break the flat expanses of lawn, and new walkways that more closely match the established flows of foot traffic. Priority 7, Storage Balcony, Construction Trades Building, $92,000. Inadequate storage facilities in the construction trades building means there are projects stacked two and three deep. Projects are left outside the storage areas, interfering with instructional programs. Apprenticeship and continuing education students have no storage space at all. And several classes have to share the same storage areas. The storage area has a 20-foot ceiling. We ask the regions to recommend funds for the construction of a 2,800 square foot storage balcony to double our storage area and solve storage problems in this facility for many years to come. Priority 8, Facilities and Purchasing Building, $3,891,000. A central building housing facilities and purchasing operations would benefit the college in a number of ways. One, office and warehouse spaces now occupying parts of the administration and construction trades buildings would be available for instructional use. Two, the college's purchasing power would greatly increase as our warehouse became large enough to accommodate purchasing in large quantities. Three, by purchasing large quantities of vehicle fuels at wholesale prices free from taxes, the college would realize significant savings. Four, the college's 31 vehicles could be parked securely inside, out of the weather. Five, new shops will provide improved efficiency for electricians, mechanics, pipe fitters, and others working to maintain the buildings, grounds, telephone system, and security. We ask the regions to recommend funds for the construction of this important college support facility. Priority 9, replace roof on heating plant, $16,000. The existing roof is over 18 years old and has been repaired repeatedly. Two of the patches are in excess of 100 square feet and many smaller patches surround them. Expert opinion is that this roof will completely fail soon, causing significant damage to the contents of the building. We ask the regions to recommend funds for the replacement of the roof of our heating plant building. Priority 10, renovation of existing facilities, $233,000. We've grown much faster than we planned. Many of our facilities were built to service less than half of the loads they're now handling. Overloading has caused early deterioration. 
Our system of tactical planning provides us with an extensive list of remodeling priorities. Here are some of our most pressing needs. When our business building is completed, these faculty offices will be moved from their present locations into the new facility. These remaining areas must be remodeled to provide critically needed classrooms. These lecture hall seats are original equipment, over 18 years old. They are all discolored, and the fabric in many is frayed and worn through. Their usefulness can be extended another decade by reupholstering them. These second-year commercial art students share this wall with our college's only gymnasium. The art students have a difficult time concentrating while basketball games are being played or when aerobics classes meet. The situation can be greatly improved by the installation of soundproofing materials. Carpets in several areas are worn thin, pulling loose from the floor and coming apart at the seams. To remove both safety hazards and preserve minimal aesthetic qualities, these carpets must be replaced. The windows in our dental assisting lab are single pane glass. During the winter, students and patients freeze, and during the summer, they broil. The problem can be solved by installing thermal double pane glass. Here are some other critical renovations. Install insulated glass to lower heating and cooling costs. Make several classrooms out of a large basement storage room. Increase the capacities of the cashiering areas. Change an instructional foyer into a small classroom. Administrative building internal signage. Repair classroom and office furniture. Construct a berm on the south perimeter. Remodel commercial art lab. And now, a quick summary of capital facilities projects for fiscal year 1985-86. Top priority, remodel for handicapped, $102,000. Priority one, roadways and right-of-way, $729,000. Priority two, parking lots, $1,120,000. Priority 3, parking lot repairs, $159,000. Priority 4, business building phase 2, $5,638,000. Priority 5, structural concrete repair automotive trades building, $42,000. Priority 6, landscape beautification Redwood Road Campus, $207,000. Priority 7, storage balcony construction trades building, $92,000. Priority 8, Facilities and Purchasing Building, $3,891,000. Priority 9, Replace Roof Heating Plant Building, $16,000. Priority 10, Renovations of Existing Facilities, $233,000. Remember, an investment in the skills levels of Utah's workers is an investment in the future stability of Utah's economy. Please help Utah Technical College at Salt Lake to fulfill the critical role in the future development of Utah's economy. This concludes our video presentation illustrating our capital facilities request for 1985 through 1987.